Day 260 of the Ukrainian War Map, also known as the Russo-Ukrainian War. Jossie here, and today is another update as I take a simplified and down-to-earth approach to some of the most important happenings on the ground in Ukraine today. And as always, I'll quickly start off with some of the Russian military losses in the last 24 hours, so as though of the 10th of November, 22. So in the last 24-hour reporting period, there has been an additional 740 Russian military personnel losses. So coming up to 78,690 losses there. Then for hardware, there's been 16 armored combat vehicle losses. For tanks, three losses. And artillery, three there as well. Then I'll move back to the map where it's all really been happening over the past 24 hours. So starting off in Kherson, the Russian Defense Minister, Sergei Shogu, has reported the withdrawal of Russian troops from the north bank of the Dnipro River. And to withdraw them to defensive positions somewhere along the south of the river there instead. Now the recently appointed Russian commander in Ukraine, Sergei Surovikin, and Dr. Evil Wannabe cited the retreat as due to resupply issues as the primary reason for this decision. Now, as part of the Russian withdrawal strategy, Russian forces have likely laid mines to slow down the advance in Ukrainian forces. So the Ukrainian forces are expecting this. It's nothing new. But really, this withdrawal will likely prevent Russia from achieving its strategic aspirations of a land bridge. So reaching all the way to Odessa and really to Transnistria or Moldova, depending on what you want to call it there. But do note, even though this withdrawal has now been called as of the last 18 hours or so, it will likely still take place over several days to even several weeks, with Russian defensive positions and artillery fire uh, covering the withdrawing forces. Because Russia does not want to withdraw in such a monumentally embarrassing way as they did in Kharkiv in the north back in uh, about September time there. But really, Ukraine has every incentive to make this withdrawal as costly and as chaotic as possible for the Russian army. Now, moving on, the regarding the implications uh, for the Russian side, mirita- uh, militarily speaking, it does create fresh, new and different military headaches for the Russian forces. Because since Ukraine is physically advancing their positions in this region now, it puts their weapons systems in range of some areas that Ukraine previously did not have access to, such as some parts of occupied Crimea. It also gives Ukraine access to multiple additional axes of attack into Russian positions that are held in the Zaporizhia Oblast, just to the east as well. So some Russian problems have been solved, but some new ones begin. Oh, and switching gears just for a moment, technically this Russian retreat was announced last night, so Wednesday night, the 9th of November, which is, (laughs) well, guess what else happened on the 9th of November about 30 years ago? The fall of the Berlin Wall. That's really eerily coincidental stuff right there. Now regarding this map, uh, really the battle map further in particular, so Ukrainian forces continue to fire on ferry crossings across the Dnipro River in order to complicate and disrupt the withdrawal of the Russian forces, as we could have guessed there anyway. And Ukraine also continued to launch some missile strikes at uh, Russian military equipment in the Olenshki region right there, which is no stranger to Ukrainian missile strikes at uh, strategic Russian military positions. And generally, due to this withdrawal, the ferry landings will become prime targets for Ukrainian precision artillery. The reason, not the least of which, is because, yes, the Russian forces will be moving back. There is an estimated anywhere between fifteen and 30,000 Russian troops on the north bank of the Dnipro River here. So it's quite the logistical feat for Russia to successfully pull off. 
The reason why they're leaving the North Bank in the first place is because they don't have many points to, to cross. It's all been destroyed or disrupted by Russian precision strikes. So yeah, Russia's gonna have a hard time of it over the few next days to, to the few next weeks, for instance. Because really, every time Russia is withdrawing from somewhere on the map or attempting to withdraw, the Ukrainian armed forces don't put down their weapons and just start to celebrate. Instead, they always continue with the momentum to squeeze out any last drop of land that they can. In fact, it's a strategy that's worked really well for them a few times over now. Now, in terms of liberated settlements, you can probably see a few. If I was to go on the date map, there's been four changes in one day, uh, which is quite the change for this map. Because of OPSEC, it doesn't update straight away, but quite the few changes there. Now, there's a lot of, uh, yeah, these liberated settlements in the last 24-hour period, and there's more than we even know right now. It's a very fluid situation on the ground with respect to this map. But we're talking uh, places like Snirorivka that we can see there in the, the middle of the, well, the midrift. In fact, that's technically in uh, Mikhailiv Mikhailivka. Well, sorry, Mikhailiv. I'm thinking that there's too many towns the same. So technically in Mikhailiv, the oblast. So uh, yeah, just to technically point that one out. Also in Kalinivsky and Dudchani, a little bit further over. So yeah, quite a few Ukrainian flags raised. No doubt many, many more being raised in the upcoming days as well. Oh, and just in terms of captured Russian hardware, if you watch my videos, you do know that I mentioned these. So I found a couple of examples of Russian captured hardware in the last day, like this BTR or this T-62 tank with its wicked cope cage, uh, wicked and useless but I'm sure we'll see a lot, lot more soon as well. And then just a quick update on the other big front line in this war. So we are talking the Donbass region where the armed forces of Ukraine advanced about two kilometers or approximately 1.3 miles in the Luhansk direction. And the Ukrainian army is also performing heavy artillery fire right now as we, as we speak on Russian positions near Svartove and Kremina, the really the, the two main next settlements that Ukraine is looking to liberate in this northern part right here. Then we'll move across to a little bit of news for the day. So Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in his most recent nightly address said that he urged restraint despite a lot of joy in the media space today. He also went on to say the enemy does not bring us gifts, does not make gestures of goodwill. We fight our way up. So that's a quote there. In other words, he is being cautiously steadfast about recent gains and only judges Russia by their actions, never by their words, which is something I like to repeat a lot on this channel. And in some more news, so internationally, Russian President Putin announced he will not be attending the upcoming G20 summit in Bali, Indonesia next week. Instead, his foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, will be going. This way, due to the recent embarrassing losses, Putin gets to save face simply by just not showing it. And moving on in another Russian mobilization blunder. So in this video, we have wives of the, the, the recently mobilized Russian soldiers uh, here to support their husbands. So this is at an administrative uh, city administration building. Now of particular concern to the wives uh, that they're expressing here is that their mobilized husbands in Ukraine near the front lines are telling them each time a commander sends, so a Russian commander sends groups of mobilized to the front line that these groups never come back. In fact, one wife here, I believe used the term meat grinder, a term that you have perhaps heard a lot in this war now. Then as the video continues, this one compassionless city administrator who they are voicing their concerns to would rather bury his head in the sand about the concerns. Then he proceeds to get into an argument with one of the women here. He appears to get physical with her, then asks her what she's doing here. 
So she responds saying that she was a, a relative here to support the troops. Then he replied, fine, go grab a rifle and support the men if you want. So, you know, compassionless societies like these exist in fewer and fewer numbers each and every decade. Gee, this one doesn't have long to go. And just a bit of a quick funny today, guys, to round it all off with. So this one relates to the Russian media response to the Kherson withdrawal announcement. But just for a little context, in order for me to make this channel work, I have to unfortunately subject myself to horrendous amounts of Russian propagandist state TV media every day which means spending countless hours of watching them speak some real propaganda horse poop. But today was funny uh, with what they were saying. They were firstly trying to defend the withdrawal announcement, so Russia's withdrawal in Kherson on the, uh, the northern bank there, and say this will make Russia, so this will make them better and stronger as they always say, they always say this line with any land losses that they have. Some of the media hosts did concede a bit of defeat and just were really defeated in their speech, the way that they spoke. So it, it does seem to be coming to, to some level of their, their I guess, their, their front of their conscious minds that uh, this is not an easy win uh, for a war, it's something that they can't necessarily win at all which I think is important for their, their propaganda, their, their media to, to, to talk in, 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 di in a different tone, really, uh, than they have for the last nine months with all the stuff I've had to put up with. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that for, now, uh, for no tonight, today, guys. Yeah, thanks for watching. Please leave a comment, subscribe, like, and uh, ignore all the trolls in the comments. Uh, actually, I mean, if you want to have a fun time and you've, you've got a little bit of extra time up your sleeves, have a look at their responses to today. They'll say that this is a, a good thing, probably. They'll say that it was it was planned months ago. But it's it's really just an embarrassing situation for Russia. I mean, they're meant to be on the offensive at a country, not worlds away, but right next door to them. Add to that or compound that to, to the fact that it, it's, it's pretty much flat plains in, in Ukraine. So Ukraine, second best army in the world, second best army in Ukraine. So thanks again, guys, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Cheers.